Hello, St. Peter's. Hello, St. Peter's. We are so glad you're here with us today for worship. We hope you are all staying safe and healthy during this time. Here are a few announcements. We invite you to join our Zoom online Bible study of the New Testament Book of Romans Wednesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 8.05 a.m. Please contact Bruce Wilcox for the Zoom invitation or for more information. We want to continue to spread the good news to others. So as you're watching this morning's worship, we encourage you to share this YouTube link with a friend. We post our worship service on our Facebook page every Sunday morning after it premieres on YouTube. Please share it there, as well as to help us spread hope online in every way we can. If you would like to give to the church, we invite you to visit us online at stpeterspress.org and click the Give tab at the top right or make a donation via our Venmo account, which is the at sign St. Peter's by the sea or mail a check directly to St. Peter's at 6410 PV Drive South, Rancho Palos Verdes, California, 90275. The Peninsula Harbor Crop Walk is celebrating its 40th year. The Crop Hunger Walk is an important annual event and a way to show our support for agencies that fight poverty and provide essential hunger and disaster relief. This year, due to the coronavirus, we will have a virtual walk. On a day of your choice before June 30th, we invite you to walk where you like and post pictures or messages of why you support the Peninsula Harbor Crop Hunger Walk and include a Crop Hunger Walk sign or poster in your picture. Then, post it on the walk's Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Peninsula Harbor Walk. To make a donation, please visit their website at crophungerwalk.org forward slash peninsula harbor ca forward slash s p b t s or mail a check to St. Peter's by the Sea at 6410 PV Drive South, Rancho Palos Verdes, California 90275. Attention to Nancy Wilcox, Crop Walk Treasurer. For more information, please contact Nancy at nancywilcox777 at gmail.com. Black Lives Matter, St. Peter's by the Sea Response to Racism. St. Peter's by the Sea Adult Spiritual Growth will be offering an online six-week class this July. Decades after the Civil Rights Movement, America is still dealing with racism. The topic of race fills our news headlines, our city streets, and our social media. Recognizing both the centuries-old mistreatment of minority groups and American churches' sometimes heroic, sometimes shameful role in response, how should Christians respond to racism? Is it possible to respond sensitively in ways that actually make a difference? How should our faith inform and transform the way we think about race? Here at St. Peter's, we want to widen our welcome by taking a stand. As a next step, we are offering an online six-week class entitled Racism, How Should Christians Respond to Our Congregation, Local Churches, and Our Wider Community. We have an online form on our website at stpeterspress.org and we ask that you please take the time to fill it out so that we can get a better idea of the best time to offer this class and the level of interest. Are you looking for a meaningful way to spend your summer? Would you like to create a project that improves our community? St. Peter's by the Sea Presbyterian Church is building a team of summer interns to reach out to the South Bay community and beyond. Interns will create their own outreach projects Projects might include reaching out to senior citizens, interviewing community members for a podcast, writing articles about people making a difference, or creating service projects to meet community needs. The unpaid four-week internship is open to students between the ages of 12 and 18. Applicants must be self-driven, 
motivated, creative go-getters who are passionate about serving others and meeting community needs. Interns will attend weekly Zoom meetings and will follow all state and local health guidelines. Interested applicants should complete and submit this form by June 25th. The cohort will be limited to eight students. Internship dates are from July 6th through July 31st, 2020. And now, wherever you may be, let us come together and worship with one another. Good morning and welcome to online worship here at St. Peter's by the Sea. It is good to be together in this space, I'm seeking to be together while we continue to be physically apart. Um, however you find yourself this morning, um, whether you are dressed up and already well into your day, if you have just uh, uh, woken up and um, have your cup of coffee, you're in your pajamas or your robe, um, if you're sitting on your porch or sitting on your couch, um, sitting in your office, um, however you come into this space, um, we say welcome. It is good to be together. This morning, um, we're going to hear some very simple words uh, from the book of Joshua um, that will be a theme for this morning's service. And so hear these words from the first chapter of Joshua. This is your command. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. The Lord our God is with us wherever we go. Into this day, into this hour, into this moment. So let's go with God as we gather to worship together. Welcome. Good morning, St. Peter's family. This 
morning we come together, we sing a song to our God. We sing a song of hope. Let's sing that song of hope that God gives us as children. Come on, let's sing it loud. to our King. God, we thank you for that hope. We thank you for that hope you give us as your children. God, we come together as your children today in different spaces, different places. God, we say we want to give you our hearts. We want to give you our all. This morning we sing of your good grace, God. Jesus. 
As we turn to a time of sharing our prayers of confession this morning, um, we do so at the beginning of our worship service um, so that we can lay before God anything that is standing in our way of being truly present to the presence of God this morning. So in humility and in faith, I invite you to join with me in this morning's prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, what causes your heart to grieve. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Draw near to us as we offer you our silent confession. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Friends, hear the good news. Hear the good news of God's love for us, not in the earthquake, not in the storms, not in the mighty deeds, but in the silence, in the gentle touch, in the quiet rain. God says again, you are my beloved. I love you. The good news of the gospel is this. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thank you for your giving response these past few months and for a strong finish to our fiscal year. There are several ways you can give to St. Peter's by the Sea. You can visit our website, stpeterspress.org, select the Give tab, and you'll find instructions there, where you'll have the option of giving a one-time gift or setting up a recurring gift. Also on our website, you'll see a link to Venmo, or you can Venmo us from your smartphone at St. Peter's by the Sea. Lastly, you can mail a check to the church at 6410 Palos Verdes Drive South, Rancho Palos Verdes, California, 90275. As followers of Christ, we give out of gratitude, grateful for what God has given us. The Apostle Paul reminds us in his second letter to the Corinthians that each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctant or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. No matter the amount you bring as an offering to God, do so with joy as an expression of gratitude. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when darkness fails his lovely face I rest on his unchanging I'm so glad that we can worship together this Sunday, my last Sunday as associate pastor at St. Peter's by the Sea. It's hard to believe that it was 10 years ago this coming Wednesday that I began serving in ministry here. It's been rewarding and challenging, full of joy and deep sorrow, adventurous and steady. The best of times, the worst of times, as classic literature tells us, 
throughout it, God has been faithful and together we've helped each other figure out what it means to respond to God's great love in Jesus Christ, how to return God's faithfulness with as much faithfulness as we can muster. I've chosen the scripture passage for today from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua and the first chapter. And this is the Lord God speaking to God's people who followed Moses when God freed them from bondage and slavery in the land of Egypt. And they wandered around in the wilderness of the Sinai Peninsula for about 40 years or for 40 years before finally coming to the River Jordan. Now poised on its banks, ready to cross into the promised land to which God has led them. The Lord God Almighty has something to say to them through Joshua, who has been Moses' assistant. So hear now the word of God in the 8th verse of Joshua chapter 1, reading from the New Living Translation. This is my command. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to hear what you alone have to say to us today. Help us to take what is good with us and to leave behind that which is just not helpful and not from you. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, something that has been a good surprise since the coronavirus pandemic came to Los Angeles County has been creating and doing a weekly video devotional on YouTube called Truck Talks with Pastor Barbara Buck, or as a couple of my friends have called it, Buck in a Truck. I call them spiritual truck talks because it's all about having a heart-to-heart -heart spiritual conversation during the twin pandemics of COVID-19 and the violence against black people, which ha again has brought to light the systemic racism in our country. In fact, it's been so well received by you, my truck talks, been so well received by many of you in the St. Peter's Faith community, community and others, that I've created a new YouTube channel called Spiritual Truck Talks. Just type in Spiritual Truck Talks in your search engine or in YouTube to find it. So why do I say it's been one of the few good things to come out of the safer at home restrictions over the past several months? Well, one, it's allowed me to connect with many of you when we haven't been able to be together in person. And surprisingly, to connect with people beyond this particular faith community out into the world. This time in our society has opened up people's hearts to God's loves and comfort in ways that I'm not experienced before. I pray that even as we've begun to reopen our society, that this widespread thirst for connecting with God's love, mercy, and comfort will continue to be nurtured by those who follow Christ. Because I believe that God is most clearly revealed in Jesus Christ. Secondly, I've been surprised and liking this truck talks experience because this time when the world has been turned up, upside down, it's really kept me in God's word with a weekly commitment to share scriptural based truths, experience, strength, and hope with viewers. I've experienced great joy reading and studying and meditating on God's word in a, in a new and different way as I listen to the Holy Spirit's voice and guidance about which truths to highlight, how to talk about and consider and share as encouragement, a word for our unique and particular circumstances at this time, the kind of encouragement that both comforts and challenges us. And thirdly, it's been a source of amusement to me. Now, those of you who know me know I like to tell stories and so, Stick with me, hang with me on this story because it will have a point to it. 
Some of you have asked how I ended up recording my spiritual truck talks in the cab of my F-250 Ford truck. It's my cowgirl truck with the king cab, four-wheel drive, and it's just right for trailering my horse and lugging along my dog and so that we can go together on various equestrian adventures. It's an older truck. It's about 20 years old, but I'll tell you, it's one of my happy places. And it just felt natural to use it as my cell phone cab booth in order to videotape myself doing these truck talks. Plus, in a time when we had all been asked to stay home, the truck became a movable room of my house. And so it has been a learning curve, like most everything else during these unprecedented times. One thing I didn't anticipate is that sometimes I can get really hot in the truck cab with all the windows shut to block out any noise, any ambient noise. And sometimes it's just been too noisy to leave them open. Probably most problematic is the fact that it's hard to control light when you're recording in a truck. When we're recording in this worship service setting, we have special floodlights, huge things. And I'm not sure they make them for trucks. However, I have wondered. So at times like these, times like when the wandering Arameans, the people who fled enslavement in Egypt and wandered 40 years in the wilderness, just like them, well, maybe not quite like them. I found myself searching for the light, going on an adventure to follow the light, to find the sun. One busy day when I was filming, the sun fell behind the hill that overlooks where I live. So I fired up my truck and I decided to follow the sun. And I kept driving west until I ended up at the Point of Vicente Interpretive Center parking lot and I could catch the sun's last rays before it sank beyond the ocean's horizon. Now another car was parked illegally facing the ocean sunset, which provided me with the perfect excuse to also park illegally there. It just had just the light I needed, and so I parked alongside them, got set up, and began recording. Of course, it was at a time in the safer at home policies when people were especially acting out and rebelling against the, the guidance or recommendation at that time to wear masks to grocery stores. So security guards and other enforcers of rules were on edge. I was finally getting a good solid talk with only a minute or so left as the last of the sun's rays sank down past the ocean, when out of the corner of my eye, I noticed someone with a badge standing about six feet away from my truck, properly social distanced, and uh, it was a woman, and she was talking to me and trying to get my attention. And for a few seconds, I just tried to keep talking, recording, thinking I could get it done before she started banging on my window or shouting or whatever else she might decide to do. And the Lord's Spirit reminded me that I was an ordained pastor, parked illegally, making a spiritual recording on the topic of people behaving strangely during the safer at home restrictions. And so I took a deep breath and I stopped the recording and I opened the window to ask what she wanted. And I said something like, I'm trying to record something for YouTube. Those are words I never thought I would hear. And I did have to pack up and move along. It was dusk, and so the, par the parking lot was closing. But these are situations in which I never thought I would find myself in. In these strange times, we all have friends and family and neighbors and strangers now who are open to the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus in ways that we could not have imagined before, before the stressful changes brought by the coronavirus pandemic. Join me 
in sharing God's love and good news by subscribing to Spiritual Truck Talks on YouTube. Your subscribing to this channel, channel will help it be more easily found by those who have their hearts open, for those seeking comfort and encouragement, for those with ears to hear the good news. These times have focused the world's attention on systemic racism in ways I could not have imagined before COVID-19. The unseen violence against blacks and other peoples whose skin color or eye shape are different than mine, than white people like me, became visible during this safer at home time in a national and a global way. In this unprecedented time, when we've been freed from many of our usual activities and distractions, the individual details of the lives and names of black victims of police brutality have become known to white people. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and there are countless other names. I could hardly have imagined that there would be national and global support to expose covert systemic racism and to begin new ways to dismantle racialized systems in our society. There are so many new ways of doing things that have been fostered through these hard times of these twin pandemics. The St. Peter's family has pulled together new ways to donate food and hygiene items to two community partners who provide food and other services to the homeless and working poor. And this will continue at least for the next month. And so we look in today's scripture to the time when God spoke to Josh, Joshua, who was Moses' assistant, and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Get going. Cross the Jordan River, you and all the people. Cross to the country I'm giving to you. And what commands does God give them? Perhaps we can hear a command that God is giving us in these unusual times. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. God commands to Joshua and the people. Be strong. Hold on to God. Persevere in your faith and trust in God even when all around you has changed. It takes strength of will to surrender to God's care and even in grateful response to all God has done and is doing for us through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Be courageous. Do something outside the box, outside your pre-pandemic comfort zone. Have the courage to care for the vulnerable and the oppressed in practical ways. To speak on behalf of those who have been marginalized. To be neighborly and to grow your neighborhood. To change society's conversation from greed to generosity. From fear to trust from violence to peacemaking. Do not be afraid. When change is all around us and we feel uncertain, it can be easy to give into fear. F-E-A-R, the acronym for false expectations appearing real. God commands us to choose trust. God commands the people who have been freed into new life, like Moses' people and Joshua's people, to trust God enough to lean into and live into this new life we've been given, to work to make a reality of the kingdom of God here on earth for all people. And do not be discouraged, the scripture tells us. When you run into challenges, like the light unexpectedly fading, or the need to kick into gear and to follow the sun to the ends of the earth, or at least to the ocean, then don't be discouraged. 
When you run into challenges like unemployment or a job layoff, don't be discouraged. When your losses and grief are undeniably real and deep and tough, take courage. You are not alone. Why? Because the scripture told us, that the Lord God said to Joshua, and therefore to us, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And besides, you can always find me on Spiritual Truck Talks when you miss this face or my voice. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, this is your command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with us, is with us wherever we go. And so we lean heavily into that command, into that promise this morning, because we have so many prayers. There are so many things for which we long, things for which we hope, things we are working for, and things we cannot do alone. Give us persistence in our work of building your kingdom of love and peace and justice. Let us be co-workers with you, O oh God, dreaming your dreams for the world, sharing your love with this world, trusting in your faithfulness to us. We pray for all people who are sick and struggling with illness of any kind, whether it is COVID-19 or cancer or addiction or mental health challenges, we pray that your healing power would surround and support and heal all people. Be with families that grieve. Draw us all together in networks of strong love and deep compassion that we may support and help each other, come alongside of each other. Help us to remember that you are with us, God. Give patience and perseverance to those who are overwhelmed, but trying, trying to do the best that they can with new challenges. Be with caregivers, with doctors, surgeons, nurses, chaplains, counselors, and all those working in our health care systems. We pray for the custodians and administrators who are working to keep our health care systems and all systems working and safe. Keep them safe as well. We pray for workers everywhere who are essential to their household's stability. Surround them with your protection and fill them with your power. Help us to get them the equipment and the resources they need to stay safe. Fill us with gratitude and a fierce commitment to support them in any way that we can. In the midst of, of that which causes grief and despair, there is anger too, an anger inflamed by a rising inequality, feelings of hopelessness and sharp rhetoric from people that we need to lead us and not further divide us. So be with our leaders, all of our leaders, national and local, be with our president, our politicians, Again, local and national, our community leaders, our church leaders, it is time, it is time for us all to wrestle with what our role must be in bringing about change for all. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the volunteers, people who give of themselves selflessly to um, roles in ministry and mission in this church. Their generosity is an expression of who we are as Christians, uh, seeking to love and serve this world as Jesus loved and served this world. Fill us with the light of the resurrected Christ that we might shine that light into this world. God, you are the God of all that is, all that is created, and so we ask that you would bind us together into one human family. Help us to care for this planet, the world you have given us, Give us the will to change our behaviors that damage the earth, that damage your creation, that damage the created. Make us faithful caretakers of all that you have created. 
And as your church, we embody our unity by joining our voices together again this morning with the voice of Jesus, who taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have a Calling in the night, I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my By the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have a By the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a peace for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in. Oh, your 
Thank you for joining us this morning for online worship. It is always a gift to be in this unique space together. This morning, uh, we um, who identify ourselves as part of the St. Peter's family, we are um, in a moment where we are saying goodbye to three faithful servants, three people who have um, served us and served this community well. Uh, the Dr. Mark Bennett, our Associate Director of Music, who has been with us for seven years. Debbie Shaw, our Handbell Choir Director, who has been with us for three years. And the Reverend Barbara Buck, who um, blessed us with a word this morning. Um, Barbara has been with us for nearly 10 years. Um, all three of these beloved saints have um, left their fingerprints. They leave their fingerprints um, all around us. Um, they have hearts um, that are deep in love for Jesus. They have hearts that um, are deep in love for the church and the people of church. They have hearts that are deep in love and gratitude for you. And so um, this morning, we simply want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. And I want to um, invite you or remind you that there are ways for um, you to uniquely say thank you. Um, you can send cards or letters, um, you know, with stories and expressions of gratitude that only you can extend to them. Um, for Mark and for Debbie, we invite you to send those cards or letters um, with gift cards um, of your choosing to your favorite restaurant, maybe your favorite online merchant. Um, but just uh, ways that uh, could communicate a generous thank you. Um, to Mark and Debbie. Just address those um, to Mark or Debbie, send them to the church office, and we will make sure um, to compile those and um, give those um, gifts to them in a meaningful way. Um, for uh, the Reverend Barbara Buck, uh, there are expressions of gratitude um, later today. Um, we are going to be having a drive-by shalom, is what we call it. Um, it's a way that we have ritualized saying goodbye to clergy um, for many years here at St. Peter's. And so you are invited to join us at two o'clock for a drive-by Shalom. Um, come through the parking lot and uh, decorate your cars, um, whatever ways feel unique uh, to your family or to your household to say thank you to Barbara. And again, we invite you to bring cards or letters that you have uniquely written um, to drop in a basket as you come through the drive-by parade. And um, uh, we're inviting you to um, leave love gifts, um, which are cash gifts, and again, um, a deep tradition here at St. Peter's for departing clergy. And so um, be generous in all of the ways with your words, with these thank you cards and letters, and the ways that you can be generous with the love gifts and the gift cards, um, for we are grateful for these beloved saints. And now I'd like to invite um, the Reverend Barbara Buck to um, send us with a benediction and blessing. So now receive this blessing from the book of Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. God bless you.
All I need is 